Hello, hi, everyone. Welcome back to your Wednesday edition of Between Bells. Well, two State Department officials are the latest witnesses to testify in the ongoing impeachment inquiry. The full House is expected to vote Thursday on the resolution that would move the process forward. Here to discuss the latest is John Malcolm, Vice President of the Institute for Constitutional Government at the Heritage Foundation. Great to have you here with us today, John. So, Representative Jim Jordan is saying he hopes every GOP member of the House will vote no on the resolution tomorrow. Is that what you're expecting? Yeah, probably, uh, because it's not a real resolution for an impeachment inquiry. Uh, it's a resolution that says, gee, these six committees have been conducting these investigations. Just keep doing what you're doing the way you've been doing it. And I think the Republicans, with a fair amount of justification, think that the way that things have been done so far uh, is a sham, with you know, testimony taking place behind closed doors and selective leaks taking place, and with the Republicans having limited rights to issue subpoena or question witnesses. The president's lawyer isn't present to hear what's going on. Uh, so I think that they're prepared to say, look, you know, we'll consider the merits of this at the end of the day, but the process has to be open, fair, and bipartisan. This has been anything but that. All right, John, some new information coming out. Dem leadership uh, aides are telling Axios that apparently tomorrow the impeachment resolution vote will happen mid-morning tomorrow, most likely coinciding with the a big testimony tomorrow that's supposed to be coming from Tim Morrison, who allegedly, according to reports, was on that July 25th phone call between President Trump and Vladimir Zelensky. Uh, what do you think will happen from that deposition, and why do you think Democrats will then do the vote right after that? Are they expecting this to be a pretty big event? Yeah, I, you know, I don't know. They've already heard testimony from people who were on that call. They heard from Lieutenant Colonel Vindman. They've seen uh, a memorialization. It wasn't a transcript uh, of, uh, of that telephone call. I can't imagine anything coming that is so earth shattering uh, as a result of that call uh, that would lead to the timing of this. I just think that the, the, the Democrats are feeling the heat. Uh, in, in terms of you know, the accusation that the process they've been using is unfair, so they are putting a little you know, makeup on this thing and trying to make it look as if this is now going to be open, transparent, and fair, but it's not. John, I would, I would push back on that just in an idea. You remember in the Benghazi hearings, Republicans did the exact same thing to the Democrats during the hearings with that as well. It was done in closed-door sessions as well. We've even had Trey Gowdy coming out recently who was about to be hired by the Trump administration, and he said this would be a circus if it was in the public. So do you see both sides on that? Well, look, I believe in, in, in treating situations based on the facts presented. Benghazi uh, involved a lot of classified uh, information, communications going on about terrorism and the activity of terrorist groups uh, and about the security at a, uh, at a State Department uh, facility. What's going on now is not uh, dealing with classified uh, information. Whatever classification might have attached to that call, it's now been declassified. Uh, and released. And what's more, there are House rules that are specific to impeachment uh, inquiries. Benghazi was, of course, not an impeachment inquiry. This purports to be an impeachment inquiry, but the process is being used as completely unprecedented. Uh, and obviously, we have three precedents to go on, Andrew Johnson, Bill Clinton, and Richard Nixon. Those followed a certain pattern and certain rules, and Nancy Pelosi is ignoring those. Okay, well, processes and transparency aside, for President Trump, what do you think would be the most prudent strategy for him to fight impeachment? Well, I, you know, I, I think he's already saying until you have a formal impeachment inquiry, uh, we're not going to play ball with a process that we think is totally unfair. Uh, I assume that he anticipates it is highly likely that he will be impeached since it only takes a majority uh, of the members of the House representatives to, uh, you know, return an article of impeachment. But then, of course, things move over to the Senate for a trial. Uh, and rather than having an opportunity to present his evidence now in an open forum uh, before the House, I'm sure that he is gearing up to do precisely that in the Senate, where his lawyers will be there and will be able to uh, put on uh, mitigating or, uh, or exculpatory facts. All right, that's John Malcolm, Vice President of the Institution for Constitutional Government at the Heritage Foundation. John, thanks so much for your time today. Great to be with you.